da je prije svim, da je biti, mi doklad bude po integraciju C in C++ kodu v Flutter dodatok. Čas je rošeri svi ekran. Ok, ok, so dan, let's go. So, so today I'm going to present you guys uh, uh, my presentation, which is about uh, how to integrate uh, C and C++ code into your Flutter application. And the same thing goes for Flutter plugins. So first of all, who am I? So I'm Dari Bitsi. I'm the team lead uh, of the Android, iOS, and Flutter team in Ardas. I have been building software for the past seven years, and for the and, and for, for the past five years, I've been building mostly on mobile, using native Android, iOS, and Flutter, and sometimes Xamarin. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can you can contact me using the links which are here. So first of all, uh, why would you use uh, or write C++ or C code for your Flutter application when you have Dart, Java, Swift, and so forth? So uh, in your journey as a, as a software engineer, you will always, you will sometimes have to implement features that require you to access uh, specific low-level device or system capabilities accessories or resources which are not available in the high level API, which mean uh, Swift API, Java or Dart API. So for such cases or use cases, you will have to access those, those services, accessories using the C or C++ APIs. Or for example, uh, if you have a feature that requires you to use a maximum amount of system resources, for example, memory, those type of features cannot be easily implemented in Dart because Dart is garbage collected. So, so for these features, you will have to implement those in C or C++ because they allow you to use or control the memory as you wish. And the last thing is if you want to use a cross-platform library, for example, a library to stream RDP video from a security camera to your Flutter app, you will have to most of the time use a C library, for example, GStreamer. Or like in our case, we will see basically how to add a, a database library, which is LMDB, if you guys know it. We will try to implement it uh, using Dart V in Flutter. Yeah, so ways to implement or integrate C and C++ code in your Flutter application. So on Android, uh, you can integrate C and C++ code uh, using basically, you have to bundle the code as a shared object library, which is a .so file. So the code uh, we have to be built and bundled into the app using Gradle CMake or NDK build. And then you can access this library or the method that the library provides using JNI or that Fifi. And on iOS, if you want to integrate uh, C and C++ code, you will have to bundle it as a static library or as a dynamic library or as a text-based dynamic library or, or a framework. And you can then access it using Objective-C or Swift or Dart Fifi and so forth. And on web, uh, you can integrate C and C++ code. Uh, you have to first compile it uh, to WebAssembly. And then from WebAssembly, you have to, you have to convert it to JavaScript using uh, the, let me put the pointer, using the EMS scripting uh, tool, this one. And then you, and then you can access it uh, using uh, Dart.js. So in this presentation, we will see how to access and build uh, C and C++ library using Android and iOS, and then how to access it using uh, Dart.fi and 
and uh, Dart free on both platforms, Android and iOS. So uh, why not using the Java native interface or the regular Objective-C and Swift? Uh, because basically, uh, in Dart, uh, you have something that is called Isolate. And uh, when your app uh, is launched, it's, it's actually running on a Isolate. And the Isolate has, has its own memory. And if, you, if we decide to let's say go go to adding uh, R C plus plus code uh, and accessing it using using GNI. So first from Dart to GNI and then GNI to C. So this will be first of all a big overhead on the performance because basically Dart will have to first do some kind of a RPC call, which will be to take your data move it to a second thread, which is a native thread on both Android and iOS. And then from this native thread to the C++ and buffer. So, so that's why the Dart team had the great idea to add uh, FFI to Dart, which, which, which is basically, uh, so, so FFI is basically uh, a foreign function interface, which is a mechanism which allow a program written in our case in Dart to call functions or routine or services written in C or C++. And there is a catch. Uh, the Dart Fifi is only available, like Dart Fifi only provides binding for the C language. So, so if you have, if you want to use a C++ library or to access C++ library, you will have to First, maybe expose the C++ library with a C compatible interface, which means that you have to define uh, what what is called an extern C, or you will have to write uh, uh, wrappers around the C code in C, so that so that that can easily access uh, the functions, the the property and the services of the library that you want to use. So, so the types. So basically, when you are building a, when you are trying to access uh, a library or trying to use a code that is right, that, that is written in C or in C++, you will have to go to three-way, three-step conversion. The first convention is to first have what is the type definition of, let's say, the function or the, or, or the class, the struct, or the property. So in C, we have, uh, we have bounded integer, which, which are signed or unsigned with size from 8, 16, 32, and 64 bytes. Those size can be easily translated to Dart Fifi. Uh, like using int or uint, int for signed or uint for unsigned, and matching the proper size. And then those size will have to be converted to Dart itself so, so that you in your Dart application, you can easily call them using, uh, uh, so all of the integer in Dart are 64 bytes and they are always signed. And the uh, second thing is that uh, those type cannot be initiated. So basically, you cannot create an int8 class. Those types are only used so that Dart can understand how it can convert your Dart code to C code, or how it can convert the C code to Dart code, and both of them. So after that, well, if you have been using C or C++, a C or C++ uh, for the past years and so forth. If you want to use for it, say, a old library, you will often find that uh, those library does not use uh, bounded integer. They, they often use uh, integer which, which are not bounded by, by, uh, by any size, which means that uh, you have signed or unsigned it, and those int can actually, the size of the int can differ from different CPU architecture, from different compiler, and from different operating system. Uh, 
So at the moment, the Dart Fifi does not officially support those type. But if you want to still use functions which use those type, int and long, you will have to use uh, the pointer sized integer type. Because basically this type can actually hold any size of int that you give in. So basically if a function specify that it's return a int or that it take into parameter a int or a long, you can just use this int pointer, this pointer sized integer, and then this one will be committed to int. So basically, this is a workaround to use uh, those types which are not yet available in the Dart Fifi in your Dart application. And after that, we have float, double, and boolean. Float or double are pretty straightforward. So you have the float on the, on the C uh, side, the double on the C side, and you have uh, the float with, with uppercase, as you can see here and double class with, with uppercase, and you have int8 for, for the Boolean. So why int8? Uh, basically, at the moment, at the moment, uh, Dart does not, where well, Dart uh, Fifi does not support uh, the Boolean type. So basically, what you have to do is that uh, you have to use the integer, uh, int8, because basically, automatically, C and C++ can, can automatically transform a zero to a false and a number greater than, than zero to a true. So, so basically, to, come, uh, to walk around the fact that Dart Fifi does not support Boolean, in your conversion of a function that may return a Boolean or that may take in a Boolean, you have to specify the function as int8 and on the dark side, you have to use int. And then uh, when you will cause the function, you will have to convert uh, this Boolean to zero for false and greater than, than zero for true. And also we have struct, we have void, and we have pointer and char. So basically for the struct type, you have the struct class, which is with uppercase struct. Uh, there is no type uh, conversion for the Dart. So basically, in your Dart code, you will have, uh, well, you will have to define a class that will extend basically the struct, and the same class will be used on both sides, here and here. And for void, you have uh, the uppercase void on the Dart Fifi side, and you have the lowercase void on the Dart side. So as, so as I said, the conversion go from C, Dart Fifi, and then Dart. And for the pointer, you have the pointer class, which can be allocated using malloc on both sides, Dart and C, which can, which can also be freed using uh, on both sides, C and Dart. And you have char. So char is basically the current way on, on C of defining a string. But, but unfortunately, on the Dart Fifi, you have, you have, you have to define uh, the string as a class which is called UTF-8. So when you will have a function, let's say a function in C, which return a pointer to char or, or a char, you will have to define the binding to this function as pointer to UTF-8. And then on the dark side, you will also have to define this, uh, this maybe as a string and then manually convert it to a pointer of UTF-8. We will see more examples in the demo on how to do that. And uh, also at the moment, uh, uh, C, C enum are not supported uh, in Dart Fifi, but from experience, there is a workaround. So let's say you have an enum uh, with some feed, and let's say you have a function that return an enum, or that take into parameter an enum. So for that, uh, you can specify, just as we said, you, you can specify the pointer size integer, because basically, uh, 
the size of a enum is not a constant. Like the size of enum is depending on the compiler that was used to compile the C code, or 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 the size of the enum is depending on the OS or the architecture. And on the dark side, you have to use int. So uh, you can do. Uh, there is a way to actually have a a more cleaner ways of 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 defining uh, C enum in Dart. So so basically, if you have uh, a enum like that, as you can see here, you can just do the binding using int int ptr. But in Dart, you can specify the enum as a Dart enum. But but when you will call but when you will call uh, this enum, you will have to use the index of this enum to call the C functions. Uh, so basically, uh, so basically, the order of the enum options will have to match the C order of the of the enum options. And lastly, we have arrays. So currently, uh, Dart Fifi also does not support uh, C array, uh, like int, uh, char, and so forth. But there is a workaround, of course. So you can use a pointer of the type that you want to have in the array, and then create this pointer to have uh, a size matching the amount of value that you want to have uh, inside of the array. We will see an example of that uh, in the demo shortly. So here is a small example on how a function in C will look like in Dart Fifi and then in Dart. So for example, we have a multiply function which return a int of 32 bytes. We take into parameter a int of 32 bytes. So in Dart Fifi, you will have to represent this function as 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 follow: in 32 function, which take two in 32, and from the Dart perspective, excuse me, you will have to just say int 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 two because basically, as we said pre previously, Dart only has one in type, which is signed 64 bit. So let's say you have a, a void function which return void and take an integer. So for that Fifi, the conversion will be void function. And size here, we don't have a specific sized integer. We have to use a pointer sized integer, which is int ptr. But in that, we can easily just use int because basically integer in, in the Dart VM are always 64 bytes. And uh, and in the and let's say we have a function that return uh, a pointer to a uh, to a car uh, to a car which can be actually a string and which take pointer of int and of multiple uh, integer so the conversion would be a pointer to UTF-8 on the Dart Fifi side and here also as you can see the integer is not does not have a specified size as here, for example. So that's why we have to use a pointer size integer. And we don't have to specify pointer because this one is already a pointer, but just a size pointer. And and on the dark side, we and and on and on the dark side, since the, the conversion to the string of dart have to be done manually. So you have to specify pointer of UTF-8 to basically match this one. And then if you want, you can manually then, ch then change from this to string. We will also see example of that in the demo. And let's say if you have a, a struct, which is basically a way of C code to define uh, a type of an object, for, 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 for example, something close to OOP, so let's say we have uh, a type def of a struct, which has a feed h, which is a sized integer of eight. 
with the size and and also with a second feed which is which is named metadata which is a pointer to void which is often used in C libraries so this conversion will will will, will look like that so you will have a class user which will extend struct so here there is a difference because if you define a function you have you have to use uh, the proper type like that but if you define a struct you have to use annotation to define uh, the dart fifi type so basically for the type like integer void and so forth you can use annotation and here you say class of user extend struct and this and then you can use the integer of the dart and specifies the name of the feed and you can annotate it with the proper integer size so that the dart fifi library we know how to, how to convert this integer to the proper size integer and for void since you cannot uh, since here it's a pointer to void and not just void you cannot easily do the conversion from void to just lowercase void and for this reason you have to use pointer of void to 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 actually match the pointer to void here so basically that's it and the good thing is that after defining that you don't have to define any other representation on 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 that because that basically will just use this definition of the object <clears throat> so let's say you have a function that returns an int which is again not sized but the function take a struct which is a pointer to a pointer of this struct so basically the conversion will look like that int integer uh, pointer to the integer function a pointer to a pointer of the user struct and the conversion to dart will look like int because int can be easily converted to the integer type because dart only has one integer which is 64 sign it but if you want to define this unfortunately you cannot uh, have uh, because dart vm does not have uh, a type which match uh, the pointer to pointer struct so for that you will have to use pointer to pointer and user sorry here it should be user and then uh, in your code you will have to encapsulate this some way just so that user won't have to know about dart fifi yes okay so if you want to return uh, let's say if, if you have a function that return a pointer to a struct the conversion will be basically pointer to struct and size again the dart vm does not have the pointer type you will have to use uh, excuse me you will have to use uh, the same dart fifi type pointer to to define uh, this this representation of this function in the dart vm <clears throat> okay so now how to how to define enium so just as i say uh, enium in c are not yet supported in dart fifi but there is a workaround like you you can specify this enium as integer in dart fifi which means that uh, functions that receive uh, this enium options like for example this one will will have to have integer pointer defined and in your code you can have uh, enium of uh, for example matrix peel with the same order matching the order here and then and then for example if you have a function let's say void choose new which take a enum of matrix peel which can be red and blue just like in the matrix film so this will be the dart dart fifi conversion of this c functions which is basically 
uppercase void function and the integer because basically a enum size can be different depending on the OS, on the architecture, or the compiler, or the compiler that the code was compiled. And then uh, to call this function in Dart, so basically the function will look like this, void, lowercase, because void can be easily uh, committed to void. And then the parameter will be int. But if you want to call this integer, like you have to use for example, choose Nero, matrix peel, which is the enum here, the option, red or blue, and the index of this enum option. So basically, when you define your dat enum, it will have to match the same order as a C enum, just so that you can easily use the index property of the enum in Dart to call your C functions. So now, how to prepare your code so that it can be bundled into your application on Android. So Android, uh, you, can, you can integrate uh, C and C++ source code or library using two type of build system. You use Gradle, but with two options. You can use uh, CMake, which is a newer way of implementing uh, of, of uh, basically integrating uh, uh, C and C++ code into Android application. Or you can use the old way, which is uh, NDK build. So basically, for NDK build, you will have to create a Android.mk file. I'm sorry. Uh, that will define basically how you want, how you want Gradle the Android Gradle plugin to build your, your C++ source code or library. So basically, it defines the name of the, the name of the library. For, for example, LMDB. It defines the source code of the library that needs to be compiled and bundled into the app. And also, it also defines how this library should be built. If, if it should be a shared library, which, which, which is basically a shared object, a dot .iso file, or if it should be a static library, which is basically a dot .a file. And for CMake, it's basically the same things, the same things as here, but with less line. So you have, first of all, you have to define the minimum version that is required in order to build this library using CMake. And then you have to define what the library is. So you say, okay, so add this library to the build. The library name is LMDB, the same as here. And the type, it should be built as a shared library, the same as the last line here. And here you, you define the source code. Automatically, this this two tool will automatically know how to include uh, we automatically know how to include the header of this C or C++ library. But if the if the if 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 the header is somewhere else, you can still specify the path to the header for the tool to know how to build it. So now how to build the C and C++ code for your Flutter app or Flutter plugin on Android. So basically in your, let's say you have an Android application, so you will have to go to the build script, the Gradle build script of your application, which is, which is often to app slash build.gradle. If it's a Flutter plugin, you will have to go to the Android folder of your Flutter project and to the build.gradle inside of the Android folder of your Flutter uh, project. And inside of the Android uh, of the Android section in your build.gradle, you will have to add this specific section, which is named external native build, which actually define uh, what, is, uh, what is a native build that needs to be built with the app. So you can use two tools. 
which are CMake and NDKBuild, they all have the same parameters. So you, you can specify for which application binary interface, which is basically the CPU architecture that, that you want your library to be compiled. Let's say that uh, if, you're, if you are sure that your app will only run on 64-bit, let's say IRM or Intel CPU, then, then, uh, then in this case, you can just specify IRM64 V8 or X64 or, or X86.64 CPU type. And you can, you, can, you can also specify argument to pass to the CMake tool. Like for example, if you want uh, uh, the CMake build to enable Neon on RM or to use Clang as a compiler, you can easily do it. The same things here for the NDK build. If you want to specify, for, 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 for example, uh, compiler argument or macro to the, uh, to the uh, C compiler, for, for example, Clang, you can use the C flag for that. This is if you are trying to build a C library. If you, if you want to build a C++ library and you want to provide argument, you have to use the CPP flag. So C stands for C, and CPP stands for C++. And let's say, for example, your NDK file and your same make list file are not in the same directory as your Android folder. So, uh, so like, for example, uh, you have one, one source code, one C source code for both Android and iOS. So basically, your source code can be somewhere else. So here you, you, you can define the path to this file, to your CMake file or your NDK file, and automatically Gradle will take it, parse it, and know how to build your library. And next thing next, uh, if you don't want to specify the architecture here, you can also specify it here, inside of the default config of your, of your plugin, no, of your application, basically, or your plugin, if you want. And then at the end, after the build is done, you will, inside of your APK file, APK file is, is basically the file uh, that will be installed in your application. So this file will contain a library folder, which is named lib, with a subfolder matching the architecture of the CPU, and instead of it, you will you will have uh, all of your C and C++ library that was compiled. As you can see, we have our lmdb.so file, which is here, and then automatically Android, when you will ask him to load this library, he will automatically look for the subdirectory matching the CPU that is running on and automatically add the library to your application. And also, and, and, and also on Android, you cannot, uh, uh, you have to load uh, dynamically your library. So basically, to load a library in Android, you have to load it on demand, which means that uh, the library is not loaded in the process when the app starts. The library is loaded only when the, when the programmer or the user asks the system to load the library. So that's why it's a SOFI, because SOFI is dynamically linked. Okay, so now let's move for iOS. So to add C++ code on iOS for a Flutter app or Flutter plugin is also really easy, really straightforward. So if you have a C or a C++ uh, library. So first of all, you have to go to your source directory scheme. You have to do a right click on the project and then you will see add file to runner. Runner is the app, is the name of the project. It can be any name that your app is, but on Flutter it's basically always runner, uh, at least at the moment. And then you have to select uh, where your source code 
is it? Like where is the source file that you want to add? So you select them, and then you select uh, and 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 then you specify to create a further reference. You you select the target where this file need to be added, and it's not and you cannot uh, if if you want you can select, but if you want you cannot select. It's not uh, mandatory, but but Xcode can automatically know how to properly locate this file and build them. And then after that, you will have uh, this structure. So you have your basic Flutter application here, or plugin. And then you have the code of the library that you that you've added here. And uh, uh, in iOS, as we just saw here, we have uh, uh, beside uh, uh, beside basically a source code. We also have a already built library, which is static library, dynamic library, and framework. So, if you want to add uh, a universal framework library, a static library, a dynamic library, or a framework, so what you can do, you can uh, select here in the info section, you select your target. You go, you scroll down, you go to general first. You scroll down, sorry. You go to the frameworks, library and embedded. You click, hold on a second. You click on the plus sign down here. And then you will have this pop up. Here you can select the library that you want to add or you can click here to select the path where the library is actually, <laughs> excuse me, located. So if you have, let's say, source code like here, and you want to generate from this source code a universal framework or static library or dynamic lab, lab library, you, you can do it manually. You, you can do it first of all by Xcode by creating uh, a Cocoa Touch static library or, 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 or a Cocoa Touch framework library. Or you can do it manually by using Xcode build and using the LiPo command line tool to create what is called as a fat universal library, which is basically a, a library which contain uh, all of the code for uh, for all of the CPU that the iOS platform support, which is IRM, uh, IPS, and so forth. So right now, we, we basically see the demo on how to implement uh, a C library in Dart Fifi. So for this example, I have chosen the LMDB database because, because basically at the moment in Flutter, we, we don't have many, many options in case of, of database. We, we only have, at the moment, three options, which is SQLite, Hive, or Sambast. So, uh, so, so I think that uh, we should be able to have uh, more choice than the moment. And uh, for those who have been using, let's say, uh, tools like machine learning, like Cafe, TensorFlow, like, uh, 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 NVIDIA machine learning library or any things, people often use this library, which is a, which is a database, which is a bit of that, that database, which is basically good because why? Because first of all, it's really fast. It's cross-platform for both iOS, Windows, Mac, uh, win, win, Windows, Mac, uh, uh, Android, any platform that you want to use it, is it's used transaction, which means that uh, it supports thread, like you, you can use it in a multi-threaded application. It also supports multi-process. It also has, uh, it, it has like, uh, it can easily recover if anything goes wrong in the app. So basically, if you have a bug in your code, this will not break your 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 database like you have in SQLite or Hive. 
like if you have let uh, uh, let's say if the system reboot when you're doing a write, this will not break your database. If let's say the the system crash, it will also not break your database because this one is really good for for let's say small app, big app, no matter. And uh, so right now we will see how to implement this C library in Flutter application. And to do the conversion, like, uh, okay, to easily convert, uh, let's say, a object, a Dart object, let's say, a user object, a task object, like in our case, to, uh, 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 to a format that can be easily added in the, in the, that, 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 in the database, uh, I have used message pack. Uh, so why, why not JSON? Because first of all, JSON is really slow to pass. And the message pack is basically a format which is binary. So basically, it's it's really fast to first of all serialize and deserialize. So this can be used uh, with big object, small object does not matter. So so that's why I've chosen to not convert the object to JSON, but to use message pack. So here you have the link of the library that I have used. You have the link explaining what is message pack. You you can click here later. So now it's so now it's demo time. So basically, uh, this project is also available in GitHub as the following link. So right now I'm going to go out of the presentation and go into IntelliJ ID. So basically, uh, let me do this. Yep. Okay. So basically, this is our Flutter application. It's a simple application with the Android folder, the iOS folder, and the lib folder. And here, what I did, I downloaded the, the source code of the LMDB, which is here, as you can see, with the header of the C code, with the C implementation. So first of all, what you have to do is to open the Android folder using doing a right click going here like that so then just just hold on a second one while it's opening so after so after it's open so just as we saw uh, previously in the in the presentation let me do this. You, you can basically just, let me do this. No, let me do this. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so you can basically just just go to your to your to your build that gradle, this one. So here, as you can see, we have the Android tag. This is the same things on any Flutter application, any Flutter plugin. You just have to scroll down. You create the external build tag that we just saw in the presentation. You specify the tool that you want to use, the path to the CMake. So this path is the same path, is, is the path to this file, this one. I'm going to zoom in just so that you can see. So, so basically what we are saying is that CMake Please use, let me do this. Uh, CMake, please use use the CMake list file, which, which is which is uh, located outside of the Android folder. So this folder, basically. And then automatically Gradle will Gradle will, will automatically read the file, this one, this file, and we automatically add the C++ source code as, as your source code to be bundled. So, uh, so as you can see here, now, now the library that is here, that, that is outside of this folder, is properly recognized as a valid source code of this project. 
So we have the header. As you can see here, we have the implementation and so forth. OK, so I'm going to close Android Studio because it's no more necessary. So if you want to do the same things on iOS, just as we saw, right click, Flutter plugin, open iOS module. So Xcode is opening. You select, so let's say if you are here, you come here, you select the project here, right click, excuse me, add file. You go to the path where, where, where your file is located. It can be outside of the iOS folder, it's fine, like for here. Since I've already added the file, you, you can see that here it's, it's gray. That means that it's already added to the target. So here you specify the target that, that you want to add. You specify that it should create a, a reference to those file, like here. If you want, you can copy the file here, but but at least for me, this is just like duplication. It's not ne necessary. So after that, you, you just click to add and your file will appear under the runner project. And then the same things if you want to add a already like uh, 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 like if you don't have if you don't have source code but you have uh, already a artifact, a framework, a static library, a DLL, a TBD, you can just click here. So as you can see, it proposed me first of all all of the libraries that that are available inside of the iOS SDK or inside of the pod. So if you don't find your library here, you can click on add order here, the same things, or add dependency, the same things. So I'm going to close also Xcode so that we can focus uh, on the Dart part. So I'm going to open the header of the LMDB. So LMDB is a, is, a, is a database which work as follow. You have a, let's say, a, you have an environment which, which can contain multiple database and this environment can be created. And, and then uh, for each insertion, deletion or access, you can use, you have to use transactions. Uh, so so uh, so this is this is using something that is called let me go to LMDB something that is called uh, as MCC hold on a second as MCC uh, MCC design like everything has to go using transactions so why uh, so 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 that in case if you are let's say if some issue happen if you have if you have some code if you have some bugs in your code, your database will not be break because, because basically the transaction was not committed or was not completed. So first of all, so uh, it's, it's a good practice to create uh, a separate file. You can name it uh, the name of the library and bindings, which will contain the conversion from C to Dart and uh, to Dart Fifi and Dart uh, itself. So let's see an example. So first of all, uh, to access the, the LMDB database, we need to first create a environment. So what we so what we have to do first? Hold on a second, copy. So we have to represent this function. So as you can see, this function take a integer, where well, this take uh, take a struct, which is mdb -enf, a pointer to a pointer of a struct of this type, and this one return a integer. So the Dart Fifi version of this function, let me do this. Look like this. So we have a pointer to a pointer of mdb 
which return int. So the Dart version of this one will look like this. F integer pointer sized, because basically this one is not a sized integer function, a pointer to a pointer of this struct. And then the Dart version of this version will be a integer to a function to a function that that take into parameter a pointer to a pointer of mdbm and then to actually access this in your c code so what you have to do let me scroll down you have to first so basically uh, just as i said previously in Dart, you can load the library two ways. You can load it on demand, like that, or you can load it using the current process. So on iOS, the library is automatically loaded. If it's a static library, it's loaded automatically with the process. So basically, once the app launch, this library is also launched with the app. So uh, the gotcha here is that if the library size is really big, then your app start will be really slow. Because basically the library will be too much and then, uh, and then Dart will take, Dart and the Swift uh, iOS toolkit will take a lot of time to load the library. And the second thing is that even if you use a dynamic library, which is a dlib, like we saw, a dlib, or a text-based lib, it, it can still be slow, because why? Because dlib, is, it's basically just saying that, okay, this library can be used by not only your app, but any other app that actually want to link to this library. Like, for example, if you want, uh, if you want, to link into uh, the audio library of Android or let's say for iOS. So basically this, those library, system library are always dynamic library because many app may use them. So basically access to this library will have to be synchronized with your app and other app. So that's why it's always not always, but uh, it's, it's, it may be most of the time required uh, to use a static library because loading the library uh, may be slow, but using the library will, will be fast. But if you use a dynamic library, loading it might be slow, might be not slow, but, but to access it, you will have to wait for maybe some other app to access it, or you will have uh, to wait for you to access it. Yeah. So basically, you load a library by calling dynamic library open function. This this function take take a string, which is basically the name of the library. And if, for example, you are in macOS or iOS, you can just use the current process because macOS supports static library. So basically they are bundled with the app and launched automatically when the app starts. Yep. Okay. So now, first of all, we have to load the library, like here. So the library is loaded. Now we have to found, excuse me, we have to found these functions from the dynamic library that was loaded. So basically what happens is that you, you use the instance that was loaded, you use the method lookup, which you basically look for this function name inside of this library. And here you define that, okay, I want to look for a function, a native function, which match the signature that was specified here. 
like integer pointer function pointer to pointer and mdvm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll down. And then after that, you have this one will automatically convert this type of function to the Dart version of the function, which is integer function pointer to pointer. And then inside of your inside of your application or of your library plugin, you, you can easily call it. Let me scroll here. Just like that. So bindings, the name of the field, and the parameter. Okay, so let's see let's see a quick example on how to create a pointer. Because as you see here, we have to pass a pointer to a pointer of this type. So first of all, we have to allocate memory, which means that we we have to simulate a malloc on the Dart side. So Dart Fifi provides us a function which is named allocate. So basically, this one, it's, it's basically a, a version of malloc on C. So what we do, we say, okay, first of all, I want you to allocate memory to represent a pointer to a pointer of this struct. And this struct is defined as follows. So the same things as what we have uh, what we have, uh, let me scroll up here. As you can see, type struct, type struct, same things. Class of MDB, struct, no parameter, same things. Okay, so we allocate the memory. We send, let me do this. We send the memory to the, to the method. And inside of the C code, the C code can also itself easily allocate the pointer uh, uh, because basically when you allocate the memory, this, this is just an empty memory, like nothing is inside. But you can send it to the C code and, and the C code will automatically populate the pointer. So, so that's the way everything is works. So like you have uh, basically C functions, you call them, just like in regular uh, Dart code. So now, so now let's say a quick example. I will launch the app first, first on Android, but we will also see on iOS. So basically, uh, we have uh, okay. Let me do this. So, but, uh, so like as you see, it's basically a working dat database. So let me delete it just to show that it's completely working perfectly. So we have uh, a object of, so this app is actually simulating uh, a task app. So we have a task object, close this one. We have, we have a task object, which has a ID, a name, and a date time. And this task object, as you can see, does not contain any of the things that uh, that we see in Hive or SQLite, like uh, I don't know, like Hive value or, or integer. No, it's a simple Dart class, and we have uh, a UI with some feed, which help us uh, to actually add a object. So let's wait for it to boot. It, it should take not long. So it's building, it's installing the app. Hold on a second, it's loading. As you can see, the app is installed. So as you can see, the list is empty because no tasks have, have, have yet been added to the database. Click on the plus. So now you, you, you can see here. So now let's try to add a new task. Um, demo of Dart 
Fifi on Flutter. Yeah. So we add it. As you can see, it's automatically here, available. And the dat have been properly saved. So what we are doing right now, so like we have this task object, as you can see here, and in the LMDB, we have uh, a put task, which take the k of the thing that you want to put, like the task ID, in, in this case, and a task. We check first that, uh, the, that the environment is open. And we do run in transaction. So this function basically what it does, it creates the bindings that we saw uh, previously here, which, which, which is basically a singleton because you only have to load this function one time because if, 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 if you do it multiple times, then it's really a bug. <laughs> and then uh, we allocate uh, his we begin the transaction. So, so here we are calling C++ uh, C code, as you can see here. We get the transaction. We verify if there is no database yet. If there is no one yet, we create a database, we open it. And then we run the block that is, uh, 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 that is provided here. And then we commit database. So now let's see how the block look like. So here we get the K. So if you remember, I said here that we will be using a message pack, which, which is basically a way to convert uh, any object to a binary. So here basically we take the task object, first the string, we serialize it to a binary, a unit list by, by, by binary. The same things for, for, for the task, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, but first of all, uh, the thing is that uh, message pack does not know how to serialize a task. It's not how to serialize integer, string, long, double, float, map, list, but not the object. So that's why we have, uh, that's why we created this encoder and decoder, which basically take a object, if it's a task, and just change it to a map and serialize it. And for decoding, it take the type, which is this type, task type, and the data that was uh, created here and converted to a map because it was a map that was here and then just create a new task object with with the map parameter so easy peasy so after that we put it in a database so as you can see here we have a struct from c So this struct, let me do this, let me close all of this. This struct representation, it's the same things as the one that we have uh, here, let me do this. <clears throat> so as you can see, we have mdbval, the same things as the one we have here, mdbval. Since this one, is also not yet spotted in Dart. It's basically just a just a size, like a byte size, representing uh, the size of the data that that will be added. So here we we specify it as an integer PTR, a pointer size, just as we saw previously, and we specify the Dart type of this one. And here you can see that this 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 is a pointer to void. The same things, easy. And then to create this object coming from let's say uh, uh, let's say let's say let's say that you are coming from uh, Dart, you want to create this object, you can use this two factory. 
just like any Dart object factory constructor. And then inside, we use malloc to create basically this one, uh, uh, to create a pointer to this object. And then using the reference property, we can easily assign the value, just like regular Dart. And let's say if we want to create from a binary that we get uh, from message pack, we get the binary. We allocate, and uh, just 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 a quick note: this I actually found it just by thinking uh, because basically currently there is no way to go from a uint list from a pointer uh, uh, right now in Dart. There is a way to go from a pointer to a uh, uh, to a uint list, but there is no way to go from a unit list to a pointer. But what you can do as a workaround, you can allocate memory that match the, li that match the size of the unit list. And then after that, because basically a pointer, as you can see here, it's a object which can be like, uh, which can be accessed using uh, which can be said using a uh, using element uh, so like basically you you you, you can basically add uh, add uh, add value to to every index of the pointer so here i have a function that take a unit list which is binary and a pointer and i go through all of the element of, of the unit list and in the index of this object, I just add the value. So this this is a workaround to actually populate, uh, uh, to actually simulate creating an array of any type in Dart. But unfortunately, I could not find this in any documentation or any GitHub issue. So it took some time to find how to do this. Well, I had to read the, the C code of the Dart Fifi API. Okay, so after that, so basically for the size, uh, because here basically we are specifying the size of this data. So what we have, we have, we have to do, we have to basically take the size of a uint 8, which is basically uh, 8 bytes, unsigned and multiply it by actually the length of this list. So this actually create enough memory to hold all of the bytes from this data. And for the K, it's pretty much easy. We just take, excuse me, uh, we just take the K and just easily cast it to a pointer of void. Uh, because basically in C you 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 can cast uh, any kind of struct of or value to a pointer of void easily. So let's come back to the let's come back to the example. So as you can see here, we just uh, we just uh, take this one, create a create a Dart version of this struct, and give the address. Uh, so this one refer to the memory address, like the pointer, uh, refer to the pointer that this struct is 7n. Uh, so why why we do that? Because if we see the md put function in the header, you can see that it it receive a pointer to a transaction, which is this. It receive a MDB, and MDB is actually just an integer. So, so just that's why here is just basically a pointer to an integer, as you can see here. And this one require actually, let me scroll down. This one require a pointer to this value. So, so that's why we we don't pass uh, the object, but we pass 
the address to that object, the same thing as here. And for the flag here, we can use regular integer because automatically Dart Fifi we, we transfer it to int. Yep. Okay. Uh, so so we saw the demo on Android. Like you can just come here, add another task. As you can see, we can close the app completely, reopen it. And data is still here. We can do a restart of the operating system. And, and as you can see, database is really fast, definitely fast. It's really, really fast because basically uh, LMDB is suited for really fast data management uh, because it used a memory map. For those who know memory app, memory map, uh, it's a it's a place in your system, which actually is an address memory. Uh, you, you, you can read more on the link provided in, in the app. So as you can see, everything is still in place. We can do the same things on iOS without no issue. So we, we open the iOS simulator, as you can see here. It's booting up. So we are close to the end of the presentation. Now it's boot up. We just run the app. Let me do this, let me come back. Yeah, so it's building, the ESCO build is going on. Uh -huh. A few seconds, let's see. Uh, so basically, Dart Fifi uh, allow a Flutter application uh, because people often say that Flutter is just for toy app. So using Dart Fifi, you can basically do anything. You, you can have video call library. You can have uh, WebRTC C library into Flutter and doing video call you can access audio devices, you can access Bluetooth. So as you can see, automatically, that is already here. So we can come here, plus sign. You can add a uh, high art flutter. I think that's the name of the, of the meetup. As you can see here, here is it, art flutter. We can say, again, one last high iOS. It's here. And if we close the application, reopen it, we see everything is still safe. Even if we do a reboot, it's still safe. And as you can see, it's really fast on both platforms. It's really, really fast because LMDB, it's, it's like that. It's a really fast database for, for, for mobile and embedded. Yeah, so basically that was the demo. You can find uh, the project here and read more. I have added some some uh, some documentation on the code for you to properly understand how the how the project work. If you have any question, leave it there. So I'm going to read the questions. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So. First question, thank you too. Yeah, it's a very hard topic, but the good thing is that this allow you to basically do anything you want in Flutter. Like there is no more restriction because because uh, you can access the GPU, the CPU, the memory, the audio device, the cable. Like Flutter is no more for toy apps. Okay. Uh, Yes, we can use uh, C++ in web, but not with Dart Fifi. As I said uh, in the previous slide here, for web, basically, you will have to compile the, the let, me, let me stop this. You will have to compile the C code uh, to WebAssembly, and then for WebAssembly to 
uh, to JavaScript using uh, the M script and um, tool, and then using that script to access. Uh, <laughs> two pointer is basically uh, like uh, basically in C you can actually have a pointer referencing uh, to a pointer of something else. So uh, this this is often used so that uh, a function can populate uh, some other pointer. Yeah, uh, because basically you can do a pointer by value, but this on, but, but but this only access uh, someone uh, like this uh, this only only allow someone uh, this only allow someone uh, to actually uh, well access the value of, of 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 the pointer but if you want to basically uh, like have the pointer be, be like uh, updated itself you have to use a pointer to a pointer like just as we saw uh, I'm currently preparing uh, an article of this on on medium but you, but you can already find the project at this location I, uh, I will ask uh, the meetup uh, manager to send the link into the YouTube chat oui uh, vous pouvez les trouver uh, ici vous pouvez les trouver un instant vous pouvez les trouver ici à ce lien yes yes donc uh, vous ouvrez ce lien et vous, vous verrez ici uh, le projet et tout donc tout le code est ici yes I tried uh, Rust like okay so Rust I would use uh, uh, I would use Rust uh, instead of C if you want to write yourself a library. But if there is already a library that, that was written, then I don't see the point of using Rust because, uh, because Rust is good because Rust can easily do multi-trading, can easily do many things. But if you already have a library, that means that someone already took care of doing the multi-trading for you. So for a new library, I would definitely use, use Rust and, and then access Rust using that Fifi. But but for a library that, that is already here, I will just use that Fifi. Yes, yeah, so that was all. Thank you very much. You can find the call, you, you can find the, the code on GitHub. Uh, I will share the slide later. So thank you everyone. Uh, you, you, can, you can still find me if you have question at those link, GitHub, Twitter, emails, BTDRL or LinkedIn. So that was all for me. Thank you guys.